Hello everyone, those who have joined us for this webinar session. Starting a career in software development is exciting. There is a lot to learn and it takes years of practice to become good at it, just like how it's with other crafts. Welcome to the MSIS Technologies webinar series. This is your host, Priyal Gaur. And today we have Sam Selva Prabhu, who's a technical manager at MSIS Technologies, who will also share some insights and knowledge about software development that he, he has gained over the years. And to make a little bit easier, especially for the beginners, Sam will also share some in insightful, actionable tips with you all. So, hi Sam, it's great to have you with us today for the webinar session. How are you? I'm doing good, uh, Priyal. Uh, thank you for having me speak today. Yes, Sam. Before we begin, uh, could you give us a brief about today's uh, talk session? Yeah, sure. So, um, software development is also a craft like um, other uh, many other craft. So, over the years, you would have learned some uh, useful tips and uh, some technical insights and strategies you would have developed. All those things which you were not aware when you were a junior. Now, over the years, you would have acquired that uh, craftsman skills. Uh, skills. So that uh, I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to, you know, uh, give it in three pointers. One is I'm going to talk about the clean code. And another thing is, um, uh, as most of the teams here are test automation team, so um, we need to, I'm going to talk about the PyTest uh, test automation framework. And uh, again, I'm, uh, the third point which I'm going to talk about is uh, deliberate practice. These are the three topics I'm going to uh, talk today in Priya. Okay, so uh, all right, Sam, that sounds really interesting. To begin with, let me ask you about uh, what do you mean when you say clean code? Yeah, so um, clean code means uh, when when we are writing a when, when, when a developer writes a code, computer can easily understand if you are writing in any way. Uh, you can uh, name the variable in X, Y, Z, and you can, uh, you know, write a w uh, one single program, which is, uh, you know, thousand lines of code. Computer doesn't care. But uh, mostly uh, human uh, uh, developers are going to work on the computer systems. But they cannot uh, understand that much uh, huge complex logic in their brain. So the code should be readable and understandable by humans. That is the main intention of the code. So, instantly it should be executed by the computer. So, when a code is readable and understandable, that will be called as a clean code. Understood. Okay. So, in that order, to become a software, you know, maybe a craftsman, it is very important to know about clean coding. If juniors are joining our team, how can they improve clean coding skills? Yeah. So, <laughs> When uh, juniors are joining our team, uh, normally there will be a code review process. Uh, but uh, when we are uh, seeing their code, mostly that code will not be uh, clean. It will be, you know, non-readable or, uh, you know, the lengthy program, which is very hard to understand. And at the time we, we used to correct them. But uh, in one shot, they cannot learn everything. So <clears throat> it is better they can read it from the uh, uh, good books. Um, in a clean code by Robert C. Martin is a textbook for um, a software developers who are uh, trying to write a readable code. Mm -hmm. And also there are a lot of uh, videos by Robert C. Martin who is fondly called as Uncle Bob. His videos are available in uh, YouTube also and uh, there are a lot of courses that are available, small small courses. So if they are start from there, it will be very easier that they, they can immediately apply those uh, wisdom into their uh, working. Later we can, you know, uh, guide them when we are doing code reviews and uh, they can easily pick it up. So I would like to share some screenshots of what is mean by uh, clean coding. That would make the point more clear for uh, anyone.
Okay, whether my screen is visible now? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, this is the, you know, um, non readable code. You know, if you are seeing here, this function, you know, uh, is having very long, lengthy if condition. And when a person, uh, when, when we are, this is a real code, which you know, we have for demo purpose, we have, you know, modified a little bit. So yeah. when we are initially seeing this code, uh, we couldn't understand this uh, logic. And, and like this, there were, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of lines were written in this program. So uh, we asked the original author of this code and uh, asked him, developer of the code, and we asked him to explain it. And he was explaining only after he was explaining that we were able to understand that then we said that your code doesn't uh, reveal the intention clearly then we asked him to modify when he was modifying he was on a readable manner he found that he missed some else spot so though he was an author he himself missed some of the points because the code was dirty it's not not readable so then now this is readable but still it is not a clean code because it is still there is a very lengthy code it is very hard to understand then we uh, simplify we refactor that code and we made it as a small small functions like uh, you know this uh, volume properties verification is doing volume pool property performance policy property iops property clone of property so now this is very simple then if a particular uh, property we wanted to check we can just go inside that function and that's it that is very clear uh, then. So this is what uh, all about uh, clean code. Okay. Um, seems very interesting, uh, Sam. And uh, Sam, um, how do we practice this? Um, can you please explain us? Yeah. So um, practice is uh, no. Uh, when, when a, they can uh, uh, regularly do the code review of other, others code normally seniors would have written code and raised a um, uh, pr request in github and they can uh, go and see that code and from that they can learn so many things and also they can uh, from the course they have learned they can apply those skills that is uh, you know practice is uh, practicing and reading a lot of code in that way they can uh, you know become expert in this uh, field Okay, that actually cleaned up a lot of doubts about clean coding, uh, which brings me to the next question. You said something about PyTest in the beginning. What is it and how is it uh, beneficial? In MSYS, most of the teams are, you know, uh, test automation teams. So um, they have to work in some test automation framework. So a uh, PyTest is one of the, you know, elegant and simple framework which will help them to uh, have a clear uh, knowledge of um, uh, testing framework how testing framework what are the things uh, testing framework should do for example if you're, uh, some people some teams used to develop their own framework and um, uh, it is but if they know there is a common framework was already there it will be very beneficial for example that uh, framework will have functionalities like skipping what are the test cases and uh, need not to be executed mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, it will give the test report it will um, give the you know um, we can return in, uh, in a multiple files we can um, uh, there are a lot of uh, function uh, you know uh, functionalities inbuilt so available inside the test automation framework itself mm -hmm. and also when a person is seeing that PyTest is, um, uh, they are reading, that will be, they will think that it is a unit testing framework. Mm -hmm. But actually, most of the system testing is equal to unit testing only. They can, uh, real, actually, they can use for the system testing as well. That is the uh, uh, beauty of it. So, PyTest, if they start, they will have the clear understanding of what is test automation framework. If they are automation developer, that knowledge will really uh, beneficial to them as well as for the company. Okay, okay. Uh, Sam, we also understand practice can make one grow to understand programming even better. What is your thought behind the deliberate practice? What do you mean by that? Yeah. Deliberate practice, uh, the, the meaning of deliberate practice is consistently, consciously, and with, with the intention if somebody is practicing something, that is what called a deliberate practice. So uh, I'll give you a real example. So we have uh, taken few interns recently. So one of the intern was very good at programming when we were initially interviewing him. And we took him into the team. And another person was 
somewhat okay he was good in the uh, basics but he was very curious so we decided that this fellow can learn and we took both the people and they were going through the training process by different teams so one person was trained uh, in a way that uh, he had to prepare um, you know test execution and drum and, and execution mm-hmm. and all those another person was uh, you know asked to write uh, programs every day two or three programs like that they were practicing after two months uh, i heard a fr- uh, good feedback about the person who was initially writing a good code then we mm-hmm. but since uh, two persons are available uh, there and uh, in our team only one person had to be taken so we again had a, another round of interview they were in turn now they are going into the real team so mm-hmm. we took another interview to our surprise the person who was initially writing a very good code was mm-hmm. unable to perform okay. the person who was not able to write co- good code was able to perform very well so when we are analyzing that we understood that the person uh, who was initially not performing well was keep on practicing for the next two months but another person who was good, doing very good he mm-hmm. didn't practice at all he was thinking that his work itself to prepare a test uh, environment preparation yeah. the execution and that is you know um, uh, since he lost touch with the uh, craft he you know he lost the ability and uh, then we understood that this is very very important we wanted to many juniors were like that you know they were uh, when when the junior is uh, came into the team come into the team first we will first give them to prepare the environment we will ask them to execute the test cases so that they will understand the entire system but they may mistakenly think that their whole work is going to be like this but actually that is not the real goal we want them to write a Uh, test automation scripts mm-hmm. once they are initially understand the system we will start slowly give the you know programming task but when we are slowly giving programming task we found that they are unable to do it the reason is for the uh, last two or three m- months they didn't uh, touch with the programming so that is uh, causing a lot of damage and also even experienced people is missing in some places for example some of the people were uh, you know mm, Uh, working on the technical and when they are uh, promoted into the management area uh, actually nowadays uh, when I, um, you know most of the people are technical managers so even though they are manager they need to write code exactly. but uh, when they are initially moving to the management they are thinking that here after we are going to only manage and they lost the touch with their craft they don't uh, practice their programming skills and when uh, after one year if they are looking back they lost their uh, skills Th- that skills fade away so uh, I, um, everybody i mean even for freshers as well as for uh, um, um, some uh, mid level engineers right. it is beneficial to deliberately write two or three programs every day and uh, keep practicing it deliberate practice what help them to stay at the technical edge right true true So, uh, do you suggest any strategy to implement uh, deliberate practice? Yeah. So uh, now, uh, you know, mostly in our laptop, uh, we don't install any software. We mostly develop everything in our virtual machines. And there are a lot of virtual labs are also available in as part of our work. So we can go and practice that. And also nowadays, a lot of interactive tutorials are available. Like uh, in the browser itself, left side they will ask questions. Right side you can practice. That environment will be prepared for you. So that is the simplest way to practice. Uh, there are a lot of sites like katakoda.com and many other uh, online interactive tutorials are really helpful for them. There are some uh, specific to the uh, company things will be there, right? For that, virtual labs are available. They can. go and practice that the um, the, the thing uh, the uh, the hard part of uh, preparing environment is now uh, simplified for them mm, mm. they can easily uh, you know use that and uh, practice that that is a good strategy to do that okay okay uh, very well then sam uh, thank you for uh, the webinar session and taking out time for this i am sure our audience got to unpack a lot of information in a very short time and i believe everyone can immediately benefit from the knowledge you shared with all of us uh, we hope to have you soon again for some another session another time and uh, take care stay safe 